With Jesus, we enter Holy Week at Jerusalem. Now, this is a city that has a great recognition of what is holy, what is sacred, but also, then as now, a tendency to violence. Remember back at the birth of Jesus, St. Matthew tells us that when the Magi announced the birth of, of the new king to King Herod, that all of Jerusalem was troubled. But now Matthew, is the, that king, enters Jerusalem for the last time. Matthew relates a much stronger feeling. Now, the entire city was shaken. People run around in, a, in an agitated crowd, tearing their clothes off and throwing them in front of Jesus, cutting branches from the, from the trees and laying them in the path, shouting religious anthems, religious sayings, Hosanna to the Son of David. And in five days, they're shouting, crucify him. And in the midst of a violent crowd, Jesus loses his life violently. The crowd, a jumble of people, all with different objectives, but completely unpredictable. And so as we work our way into Holy Week, we really have to ask ourselves, what is our place in the crowd? What is our relationship to that crowd? And what can we learn from Jesus, who lifted himself above the crowd and never claimed to be an earthly king, never flinched for a moment from the death he was about to suffer for all of us. You know that week in Jerusalem was a crowded week. There were tens of thousands, perhaps even hundreds of thousands of extra people in the city for the feast of the, of the Passover. And so the, the city was completely filled. But still, there was a commotion at one of the gates and everybody asked, who is this? Who is coming into the city? Now, of course, then there was no cable news network, so people couldn't tune in and find out who was on the other side of the city coming in. But they found out soon enough and raised their voices. Why? Because everybody else was doing it. And five days later, they also raised their voices in anger because everybody else was doing it. Everybody else. They gave in to the pressure of the crowd. Now we have to ask ourselves also, what is it that allows us to rise above the crowd? And for that, we look to Jesus himself, because Jesus is our example, the one we imitate, the one we know was completely self-confident, went in with com complete conviction, was knowledgeable about the fact that he had the truth for all of us. And I think of, if those people had listened to Jesus all the way through his, his ministry, Certainly, they would have cried Hosanna when he entered, but they would have pushed against, you would think, the crowd that was calling for his death. But they didn't. They didn't push against. What is it that makes us push against the crowd? It is the confidence and the integrity of Jesus himself. Jesus, all the way through his ministry, stuck very, very closely to his, to his teaching, to the way he treated each other, all of the disciples around him and everybody in the towns that he went to, knowing that that was the way that all of us are supposed to live. Jesus never waffled. Jesus never gave up on his pushing against the Pharisees, who gave us a, a lot of lip talk, but never actually lived the life that they should have in leadership of the people. Jesus had integrity. The crowd on Palm Sunday probably had a little bit of integrity, but at least they weren't violent. But the crowd on Good Friday certainly did not have integrity. They did not have courage. As we go into Holy Week, let's remember that each and every day we make large and small decisions concerning ourselves, our spiritual lives, and the lives of everybody around us. Who are we listening to when we make those decisions? Do we make the decisions from the grounding of our faith, our Catholic faith, or do we do it based on the buzz of the crowd? Do we listen to the crowd? Do we have integrity? Let us look for that integrity. Let us look to Jesus as we enter into the sacred time and the sacred space during this week. Let's watch Jesus. What does he do? He gives himself as a sacrifice for each and every one of us.